104.3 The Fan in Denver. And, of course, all guests come to you from the Folsom Lake Honda hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. Mark, of course, we're going to start in your own backyard. Uh, you have been talking about this for the last several weeks on the show here, about Nathaniel Hackett likely being gone. Uh, was this a case of you can't fire the quarterback, but someone has to go? Or, or do you think even if it was a, another quarterback, that Hackett would still be done? Yeah, I think uh, I think it's probably a case of somebody's got to be the fall guy, and um, and you know that's going to fall on the head coach. And you know, there's a lot of things that go into it. I think I think ultimately, just from an organizational structure standpoint, it's one thing to appoint a coach; it's another thing to empower a coach. And I think from day one, Nathaniel Hackett was never empowered. I think he came in with a certain set of uh, restrictions that. Uh, you know, the organization put on him saying the quarterback is going to get to do this, 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 and uh, he's got his people and this is the way it's going. And, you know, you've got to try to work within the parameters of, of those obstacles. And it's hard to tell a guy, hey, man, you stink and you're not very good and we're not going to do what you want to do when he's been assured that he gets to do what he wants to do. And so, you know, I think there was, I think that's a big part of the whole let Russ cook and, you know, leave in Seattle and I want to be in charge of the offense. And, you know, I think if you kind of just piecemeal it together, kind of read the tea leaves, I think there's a lot of that that goes on. And I just know one thing about this league, and you can look at any organization, be it Dallas over the years, be it Washington with Daniel Snyder and, and here in Denver now, if your head coach isn't empowered, you, you're doomed to fail. There's no way you can overcome that. And, you know, I always talk about there's two types of fear. There's there's the biblical sense of fear, um, you know, like the fear of the Lord, which means an awesome reverence. And I believe that's part of it. You have to have reverence and respect for the coach or the guy that's leading your organization. But the other part of that is real fear. Like you got to really like that dude has got to inspire fear. Like, you know, as a coach on his staff or as a player, if you don't get your job done, you will get fired. And. Like, if you don't empower the head coach to do that, then there's nobody that's really walking around on eggshells. And, and I believe that there's got to be, there's got to be a, that's a piece of the ultimate puzzle. Um, and, and I don't think that Nathaniel Hackett was ever given that piece right from the start. So do they have to bring in a Sean Payton or somebody along those lines who is automatically empowered by their resume and track record? Well, yeah, I mean, the odds I think of getting Sean Payton are probably slim to none. Um, because frankly, if you had, if you have other options, like why would you choose Denver if you had another option and, you know, and Sean Payton's made plenty of money and he's got options. He can go back and do television for another year if he decides that he didn't get the job that he wants. So, but I do think it has to be somebody that's got some respect, somebody who's done it before. And, you know, a guy like Dan Quinn, who was actually in Seattle and won a championship while Russell was the quarterback as a young player. Um, a guy that has a you know a lot of respect for around the league for his ability to coach and the kind of man he is. So, like I, I think that that is probably what makes most sense to me. But you know, I mean, we'll see exactly how that goes down. But um, if you have other options and there's other openings available, I think that I think you would like Denver. What might be one of the the last ones on the list, depending upon what comes open, obviously. Mark Schlereth is with us here. Cattles and Rami, Sacktown Sports on this Tuesday. Mark, the Vegas offense again this weekend was disappointing. And today, Josh McDaniels met with the media, did not necessarily poo-poo the idea of, of sitting Derek Carr. Do you think they move on from Carr after this season's over? Yeah, it's an interesting question, right? I mean, I guess my question would be, well, you know, where do you go from there? From there, what's right. what's out there that gives you a better opportunity to win? Yep. Um, and you know, I mean, a, a lot of that stuff. That they, you know, it's not just Derek Carr. I mean, not, there's a lot that goes into it. But um, I just don't like. I just don't look at uh, look at the situation, the quarterbacking situation in the NFL right now, and just think, oh yeah, automatic. I mean, think about the 2018 draft. I, I you know, I, I mean. Uh, Baker Mayfield's on his third team. Sam Darnold's on his second team. You know, that was number one and number three. Um, heck, I had I had a game last week. Um, Minnesota just picked up Josh Rosen. It's his seventh team in five years. He was the number nine pick overall. You know, and so you're looking, you're looking like, like there are no guarantees any of these guys are going to be able to play at this level. So, 
Um, yeah, I, I, it would be hard for me to, to look at Derek Carr and say, okay, we're going to get rid of Derek Carr because there's a better option. Now, you know, if Brady decides to continue to play or if, uh, you know, if Aaron Rodgers and, and Green Bay decide to part ways, then then that makes more sense to me. Like then all of a sudden it makes sense. But right now with no other options, it wouldn't it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense, I don't think. You you just mentioned it. You had you were on a, a good game on Sunday between the Vikings and the Giants. And the Vikings they do it again, man, pulling out another close comeback victory. I feel like nobody really knows what to make of that team and their place amongst contenders because all their games are so close. Are they legit, Mark, from from what you've seen up close? Yeah, they're a talented team now. They, they like their offensive line has been together for the majority of the the season. And Christian Darrisaw, their left tackle, is a young, going to be a you know he's going to be a Pro Bowl player um, if he continues to progress. Uh, they've missed their starting center uh, Bradbury for a couple of three games or so. Garrett Bradbury, so yeah, that's been kind of one issue. But Cook and Madison are really good backs. You, you could put their three wide receivers. I mean, I think Justin Jefferson's the class of the league. But the other, the other two guys, and Adam Thielen and even K.J. Osborne, have had success. you got a Pro Bowl tight end in T.J. Hawkinson. And defensively, you've got some really good players. I mean, uh, um, Dalvin Tomlinson is a really good player. Eric Kendricks is a really good player. Hicks is a good player. Uh, Patrick Peterson is playing at a really high level. Uh, Harrison Smith is, you know, perennial Pro Bowl type of player. So you've got, so you've got really good players on every level. For crying out loud, Zadarius Smith is a Pro Bowler. Hunter, uh, Daniil Hunter is – a really good player. You know, the issue is they have not been able to put four quarters together. There are, there are lulls within their games. But here's what I'll tell you about Minnesota. When it's crunch time, they find a way to make a play, offensively, defensively, and special teams. They just find a way in the critical moments to make game-changing critical plays. And that's why they're, what, 11-0 in one-score games, because they do that on a consistent basis. Mark Schlereth is with us here, Folsom Lake Honda Hotline, Folsom Lake Honda One Stop Honda Shop. Mark, of course, uh, the Niners win again against the Commanders over the weekend. I know this will likely never happen in the real world, but should Nick Bosa be in the conversation, in the discussion for MVP? Oh, he, look at man, you're preaching the choir. Like, I hate the Heisman because it, you know, as I like to refer to it, it's the Heisman. Um, <laughs> it, it's not for the, it's not for the best college football player. It's, it's for the best quarterback. I, as a matter of fact, when Terrell Suggs had 24 sacks in a season and didn't even get invited to New York, that's when I, that's when I said that I'll never pay attention to the Heisman again because that's a bunch of, it's garbage, right? And the MVP um, is, is no longer the most valuable player, or you know, it's no longer the best football player. It's, it's about the quarterback to put up the best stats, you know? So, yeah, no, I, I think there, I think there should be, we should live in a world where it's not about your quarterback, but it's about the, whoever's had the best season and is the best football player. And and I know people will say, well, they have other awards for that. You know, the defensive player of the year, I don't, like, I don't care. Yeah. They have other awards for quarterbacks too, you know, offensive player of the year and all that stuff. Yep. But Again, but you know, you're talking to a guy that doesn't doesn't classify quarterbacks as football players. Um, they're <laughs> quarterbacks. They're in their own, and, you know, they're in their own little category. It's like kickers and punters, um, you know, a notch above that. But they're in their own little category, and I understand the importance of it. But like again, they wear pink jerseys during practice. So, like, <laughs> you know, I, I'm sorry, but I just don't, I just don't look at it the same way. Mark, you're the best man. Hopefully, you have a great uh, New Year's over the weekend, and we'll talk to you next week. Sounds good, guys. Take care. All right, Bye -bye. you too. There goes Mark Schlereth, NFL on Fox, 104.3 The Fan.